everybody, it's Sherry with Our Praising Paws, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're actually gonna be making a cheese recipe that has been around for thousands of years. This recipe is actually called Chirpy, hope I'm pronouncing that right, but this street was originated in Nepal and has been around forever. And recently coming into the United States, it's become a huge thing to make into a dog treat. They're also known as Himalayan dog chews. Now, I got the inspiration to try to do this on my own from somebody that I actually follow on YouTube. His name is Rodney Habib. If you guys haven't checked him out, go to his YouTube channel and check him out because he always has great and helpful tips and tricks for you and your pets. Okay, you guys, so this recipe that we're gonna be doing today has very minimal ingredients. The only things that you are going to need is a gallon of skim milk, lime juice, or you can use fresh squeezed lemon juice if you prefer, and some Himalayan salt. Now the hardware that you're gonna need is a teaspoon, a measuring cup, a very large pot, a spoon, a slotted spoon for stirring, and then if you are able to do so, or if you have it, we're gonna use that big guy in the back there, that is my dehydrator. I've made many treats with that, and we're gonna use that again today to speed up the process. However, if you don't have a dehydrator, that's completely okay. You can put these chews when they are ready. You can put them in the oven to bake. So let's get started. Okay, so I know you can't really see my face, but I want you guys to focus on what I'm doing down here. The first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our pot on to a medium high heat. And then we're going to pour an entire gallon of skim milk into the pot. We're gonna bring this to a boil and once it's to a boil, we're actually going to turn the heat off. So I'm gonna pour this entire gallon in here. Hopefully I don't spill any of it. All right. Maybe we can save this jar for like a fun project or something. One of the longest periods is waiting for this to come to a boil. So we are to a boil now. I am going to turn off my stove top here and we're gonna continue on with the next steps. Okay, so I have obviously turned off the heat as I just showed you guys. Um, it's still kind of boiling and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our other two ingredients. And I apologize if the lighting has gotten weird. It's really cloudy outside. I think it's supposed to rain today and I don't have any additional video lighting that I use. So we're just gonna have to go with what we have and we're just gonna continue on. So again, if the lighting is bad, I apologize. So I have half a cup measured out here of lime juice. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this in to um, my pot here and I'm gonna slowly stir it as I am pouring it in there. Okay, and then the next ingredient that we're going to add is um, some Himalayan salt. I have Himalayan pink salt on hand here. Ooh, that is from the bottom. <laughs> so that just to say, um, make sure you continuously stir um, your milk so it doesn't scald, but you can already see that that is the cheese that is forming. I know, it's crazy. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt here over here so it make a huge mess and you just continuously stir and it's crazy oh my gosh you guys I can feel it I can feel the cheese already forming <gasps> oh my goodness okay so let me give I this is the first time I'm doing this so this is super exciting for me I'm going to pull the camera down and let you guys see an um, overview over here so you're supposed to stir this gently for one to two minutes and you guys I already have cheese Oh my goodness, I, you know, you see other people do this. I'm just super impressed. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. I'm super excited. As you can see, there's some dark bits. That's why I started telling you earlier. Um, I was doing something else and I forgot to continuously stir the milk as it was boiling and that's just scalding that had happened on the bottom, which is fine. It's not really gonna hurt it too much because we still obviously have some cheese going on. And I'm so excited about this, you guys. And those are the dark spots again. Just, you can scoop them out, not a big deal. Put them over there. 
Um, it's always exciting when you envision something and it turns out the way you want it to, right? So I'm just going to continue stirring this for another uh, minute or so, and then we will move on to the next step. Okay, so I've been stirring this for about two minutes. Now the next step is I'm going to start removing the cheese curds from the pot, and I'm going to put it in the strainer. Now I have a bowl underneath this so I can prevent um, any drippings to go onto the counter, um, but I'm going to start scooping the cheese out. And again, we might have some of those little burnt pieces in here, but that it's really okay. I really don't think it's going to hurt anything. So I hope you guys can see this. So far, so good. I'm really impressed with the turnout of this. Who would have thought lime juice and milk would make cheese? Now this has a little bit of that. Um, I don't know if you can see it. That's the scalding that happened on the bottom of the pot. I have my measuring cup over here. I'm just kind of dumping that stuff in there. You know, and the dogs are just going to be happy to have something fun. Like, look at that. Have something fun and different um, to chew on. It's great mental stimulation for them as well. And it's fun for me to try something new. You guys obviously know that I like to home make treats for my dogs on the regular. And I love showing you guys different ways to do it too. Now, I've seen this video on YouTube and so many people have been doing it. Again, the guy that I follow, Rodney, and that's how I first found him. He actually does work with Mercola Healthy Pets. That's how I found him originally. And so I saw his video, ooh, that's hot. And that encouraged me to want to do it myself. So, and you know, again, you see people doing videos of stuff all the time. And when it turns out well on your end, it's super exciting. As you can tell, this is my first time because I had scalding going on in here. But, um, yeah, I'm like just really excited. So I'm just going to continue to get out as much as this cheese as I possibly can. I think I got pretty much almost all of it. You don't want to waste any of it, though. Because, you know, we're putting forth the effort. Now, there are companies that manufacture these treats. The only thing that I say with that is I think that they're a little bit more expensive as opposed to you making it yourself. And how do you really know what's going into that? You know what I mean? I mean, yes, there's ingredient lists, but you know how I talk quite often about what we're feeding our dogs and knowing what that is. And that's why I like to make so many of my dog treats. I don't completely make their meals yet, but I do add my own stuff into it, like meats and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just think it feels great knowing where or what is in your dog treats. All right, I think we pretty much got all of it. And now we're going to move to the next step. Okay, so the next step is I have some cheesecloth here. I just got this cheesecloth from Walmart. Um, I took out one sheet and it was quite long, so I cut it in half. Um, and it is double layered. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the cheese that we have just made into the center of this. And dump that in here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what's going on. Dump that cheese here. And you can see that I have some little burnt bits, which really, again, you guys, is not that big of a deal. You just can pick them out. If it really bothers you, I think it'll be fun to have a little bit of color in there. Because, <laughs> you know, it's all just one color, but that's all right. So pick out whatever you want. Um, if you happen to be like me and try to multitask and find yourself having burnt bits. So you're going to put this kind of in the middle. I'm going to fold my cheesecloth over it like that. I'm going to fold this back this way. And you kind of want to make and put a little bit of pressure and be careful because it is hot. Oop, have some falling out there. You want to try to fold up all your ends and make almost kind of like a rectangular shape. Again, I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. So that's one layer for me. Then I'm gonna actually take the second half I cut in half and I'm gonna try to wrap it again without having my little cheese curds fall out. I'm gonna do my best. Again, this is my first attempt, you guys, to do this with you. So don't be scared to try something new. I'm all about trying new and different things. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply pressure and get as much 
of that extra moisture out. You know, it'd be great for this is a rolling pin to get that extra moisture out. So we are gonna try that. Try this rolling pin here. Get all the extra moisture out. Now you might have thought that waiting for the milk to boil was the longest part. Unfortunately, that is not the case. It does take a little bit to make these treats, but again, it's gonna be well worth it. You'll be proud of yourself. Your dogs will be happy. See, I kind of like this because this, the rolling pin or whatever you have to kind of like help squish that moisture out, um, kind of molds the cheese together and it's gonna help you get that rectangular shape you want just a little bit more. Now, also keep in mind the thickness here. Now, the more you push down on it, the thinner they're gonna become, right? So you gotta keep in mind how thick you want your end result of a treat to be. So I think that's pretty good. Now, the longest part is waiting. What I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna put a piece of plastic wrap over the top of this and I'm going to get a really heavy book and I'm going to set it on top of this. And you guys, you have to let it set out like that for four to six hours. I know, it seems so long. I mean, that's how they make them. So it's been about four and a half hours since we have put that big heavy book on top of our cheese. I have to admit, I checked it about at four hours and the cheesecloth was pretty moist. So I went and I switched it out and I got the other cheesecloth, it came in my package and rewrapped it. One thing I did notice is that some of the little chunks of cheese were not molded together and they were breaking off, which is perfectly okay. What we'll do is we'll just dehydrate them by the little chunks like that. So with ones like that, if you have little chunks, you just want to be sure that you are watching your dog to make sure they don't swallow it whole. You just want to be very, very cautious of that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that book off. We're going to unwrap it with the cheesecloth and we're going to see where we're at. This was the problem I was having earlier because it's crumbling. Pieces are falling out. But it's okay, we're just gonna go with it. It's still gonna probably come out somewhat decent. It's not gonna be like those perfect, you know, ones you can buy for $10 at the pet store. However, this is my first attempt. So first time is pretty good, I feel like, and we'll just continue to make them and you can only get better from here, right? All right, so move these little pieces to the side, got that. Back wrapped up, we're gonna cover it again with parchment paper and place our book back on top. And just wait for another hour and a half. Okay, you guys, so we're about 30 minutes away from six hours and I'm actually in the process of making dinner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit. We're going to not let this sit here for the full six hours, but we are gonna go ahead and put half of it on a baking sheet, and then we're gonna put the other half on a sheet to put in the dehydrator, and then we're just gonna continue on with that. So obviously you guys are aware that because this has to sit in the dehydrator for so long, anywhere from 12 to 18 hours, we won't be able to see the results till tomorrow, but let's just go ahead and open this up. I think quite a bit of that moisture is finally out of there because this is pretty dry. This is the second time I wrapped it. Um, and you can tell that there's some breakage going on, which, you know, again, you guys, it doesn't need to be perfect. It is really is fine. Ideally, I would love to cut the strips like most people would see it in the dog treat store, but it is what it is. It's not perfect. It's my first attempt, so oh well. <laughs> so these little pieces like this, I'm actually gonna put in the dehydrator. Again, you guys need to be careful when you, if you do dehydrate these pieces, when you give them to your dog, that they don't swallow them whole. Realistically, these pieces right here, I'm gonna dispose of because that's a big likelihood that that's gonna happen. But these, we will dehydrate. So I'm just gonna put them on my dehydrating tray right here and it's set to the side. And I also have a baking dish here. And we're gonna do half and half because I kinda wanna see what it looks like when it's baked at 175 degrees for 40 minutes. It's suggested at 150 degrees. However, my oven doesn't go any lower than 175 degrees. So just starting the preheating on my oven. 
And we will cut these into strips right here to put on the dehydrator. And you have to just keep in mind like the size that you want your treat to be. Get some pretty ones like that. That's the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the dehydrator tray here. And then we will put some on the baking sheet over here. I'll do the same thing here. Cut this into strips, the size of strips that you want your dog to have. Ideally, I probably should have mine a little bit larger since I have bigger dogs, but this would be great for a medium-sized dog. I'm just gonna put a few pieces on the cookie sheet because I'm gonna dehydrate majority of them, but I just wanna test it out to see what the difference is. All right, so we're going to put all the rest of these on the dehydrating sheet, and we're gonna dehydrate for 150 degrees for 12 to 18 hours. So I have my Cabela's dehydrator here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my thermostat to about 150 degrees, which is right about in there, I'm guessing. And I'll open this up. This actually comes with a whole lot of trays I set aside over here. Sorry about that, there's somebody coming down the road. But I'm just gonna put the cheese right here in the middle. So there's plenty of air circulation. I'm gonna close this up and we're gonna turn it on and let it sit there for 12 hours. These little guys here, we are gonna bake these in a 175 degree oven for about 40 minutes until they are hardened. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in my oven. Excuse the dirtiness of it, apologize. Put those in there and I'm gonna set the timer on the kitchen timer. See kitchen timer, 40 minutes, 40 minutes, all right, and then we're just going to count down the time and then we will see what the end result of these are tomorrow. Okay guys, I ended up turning up the temperature 200 degrees and it's now 8 o'clock, so these have been in here for three and a half hours. I'm going to pull them out. I really don't think that they're ready. They've been in here much longer than they have suggested. And if they're not firm like they should be, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the dehydrator. I know the lighting is terrible, sorry about that. It's just cause it's late. Yeah, see how I can put pressure on it? They're supposed to be crunchy. So in my opinion, this is not the way to go of putting them in the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And we're gonna put these in the dehydrator with the rest of them. So I've just added those treats into here and we're gonna let this go throughout the night. Okay everybody, so obviously it is the next morning. I have my cup of coffee here and I woke up this morning. My husband got around a little bit quicker than I did, but let me show you how our Himalayan dog chews turned out. Okay, so last night, um, earlier during the day, we had this set at 150 degrees Fahrenheit and I turned it down to about uh, 120, I guess, just because this was gonna be going overnight. I honestly don't know what time my husband turned this off. I got up this morning and it was off, but I um, opened it and checked them and they are quite hard. I can't even break that with my fingers. So they are done. We'll pull them all over here. So yeah, I think they turned out really well. They are really hard. I mean, I can't break it with my hand. So these are gonna be really great chews, like little treats for the pups to chew on. Okay, you guys, one more thing I almost forgot to mention. You really wanna be aware of how your dog's overall dental health is. If your dog has sensitive teeth or is older and has teeth that are prone to breaking or that it is a puppy, you want to be very, very careful with these dental chews because they are hard and they're not just something soft that they can break right through. So keep that in mind, keep your dog safe, and I hope you guys enjoy it.